can see it. Okay, great. Okay, so there's uh, there's there's many different variations of of solving these uh, square root problems, and they're kind of like they're kind of like other solving the absolute values or just regular x. In this case, your goal is generally to isolate the square root part. So in this case, the, the square root part is this square root 2x plus 3. So you want to first isolate that. So you're just going to move this 7 to the other side of the equation. Okay. Okay, so now it's it's in effect isolated. To, to undo the square root, you use the uh, power of 2. Okay, so if, that, if it's not clear what I mean by that, um, you're going to take this on the left, you're going to square it. This on the right, you're going to square it. Yeah. And that undoes the square root. So you get 2x plus 3 equals 49. And then you continue to solve this the way you you would any other equation. 2x equals 46. x equals 23. Okay. So it doesn't say it in this problem because it's not necessary, but down and starting in 26 is such a check for extraneous solutions. You may want to get in the habit of checking your answers, check, checking if, you know, if time permits, unlike on an exam. Yeah. This one we don't, we don't necessarily need to. Okay. Uh, question 22 is the next one and it is somewhat different here. Um, so I'm going to snip that in make it a little bit larger. All uh, right, so you have x plus 1 to the 3 halves power minus 2 equals 25. So your goal here is still to, is to isolate the term with the power. So it's it's really the same as this as the square root like you're, you're still trying to isolate whatever it is where x is in this case x is underneath this three halves thing we'll talk about. So to do that, you just add two to both sides. You end up getting x plus one to the three halves power equals 27. It's important to remember how to, how to rewrite um, exponents into radical form. You probably had a homework to do this or it was last semester. Uh, the, the, um, the bottom number is the root. So it's it's the square root, which we normally don't write the two for, and x plus one cubed equals 27. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Um, so you don't normally write the two, um, but in this case you do. So to, to, undo, to undo the square root, you're gonna square both sides. Actually, let me do that. So you're gonna you're gonna end up um, squaring both sides. Let me get rid of that. Yeah, I guess you, I bet you don't see that. Um, X plus one cubed, and then you're gonna square both sides. I'm gonna rewrite 27. 27 is really three cubed, and you're gonna you're gonna square three cubed. So it ends up being three to the power of six. Okay, and on the left it's just okay. X plus one cubed. Um, there's a reason for that. Um, you could definitely throw it into a calculator um, and it'll give you the same thing, but uh, I don't have one handy. So now this is this is different than what we have in this line. So when you had a, a square power, like if I said x squared equals a number, you would use the square root of x squared to equal the square root of that number. And And, and, and essentially what this is, another way to write this is, x squared to the one half power equals the number to the one half power. It's it's the reciprocal of whatever this exponent is. So when you're when you're solving, let's say you're, you're trying to solve x cubed equals a number, you can you can take the one third power of both sides of the reciprocal equals the number to the one third power. Okay. So here on the left we have x plus one cubed. We're going to take that to the one third power equals three to the sixth to the one third power. So on the left, you multiply the exponents. So you end up multiplying the exponents. Okay. 
So you end up just getting x plus one because of three times one third, any number times your reciprocal is one. On the right here, you, you multiply the six and the one third. That's two. So it's three to the power of two, which is nine. So we're almost done. Subtract one from both sides. X equals eight. Okay. There is kind of a shortcut going back to the original, um, but if you don't rewrite it into exponent form, you can potentially miss a solution, maybe not in this assignment, but in other problems. Yeah. So it's, it's best to write in exponent form. Okay, we can uh, move to 34. Make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So the, the same thing applies in this problem as in the, the first one we worked on. You want to isolate the root. Okay, which means you're gonna to have to add x to both sides. You get the square root of x plus seven equals x plus one. Okay. So to undo the square root, you use the, the power of two. So you're gonna square both sides. You're gonna take this x plus seven, you're gonna square it, equals x plus one, and you're gonna square it. So on the left, it, it undoes the roots. You get x plus seven, equals. Here you have to remember that this is really x plus one times x plus one. You have to foil it. You can't just square the first thing and the, the second thing. So you end up getting x squared plus 2x plus one. Yeah. And at this line you have to remember to get get all terms on one side. So in this case I'm going to move everything left. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. You get 0 equals x squared plus 1x, because 2x minus 1x is 1x. 1 minus 7 is minus 6. And then you have to factor this here. This is a factoring step. So you're trying to find two numbers that multiply to negative 6, but then add to 1. What would those be? It would be um, x plus 3 and x minus 2. Okay, those work. You set each of those equal to 0, so you end up setting x plus 3 equal to 0 and then x minus 2 equal to 0. So your first solution is negative 3, your second solution is 2, and you definitely have to check both of these. Okay, so to do that, you're just putting these numbers back into the original equation. So the, usually, usually it's the negative one that is, is not correct, but not because it's negative. Um, it could also be that they're both right. So you don't wanna just exclude it from that standpoint. So we're just gonna make a, a note here. We're gonna say check X equals minus three. So we have square root minus three plus seven minus a minus three, does that equal one? So this is the square root of four plus three is two plus three equal to one. No. No, so this one, this one does not work. That's not the right thing. So, so let that, we should, you should write extraneous. Okay. The other one is likely correct, but it's always it's always good to go through the motions here. Two plus seven minus two equals one. Square root of nine minus two equals one. Three minus two, does that equal one? Does one equals one? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this one works. So often a students will circle the one that's correct and cross out the one that's wrong. Um, as long as you indicate that it's extraneous and that one works, you, you've done everything you need to do. You, you definitely see something like that on, on, a, on an exam here. Okay. Okay, so 42 is the kind of the last grouping of problem um, that you'll see of this type. So there's, there's um, this one has two square roots in it. And the problem is if you say, well, 
Matthew you said to isolate the square root. Well, there's two of them. So, so you isolate one of the roots. Oh. And it doesn't matter which one, um, probably because there's a negative there, you'll move this one to the other side. Mm -hmm. You have to know this technique. I mean, it's not, it's not like uh, you're gonna all of a sudden, um, <laughs> you know, stumble onto the answer here. <laughs> you, you have to know this in advance. So we're gonna use, um, use the power of two to undo the square root. So we're gonna, we're gonna take the square root of three X plus one to the power of two equals square root X plus one plus two to the power of two. So the left-hand side, you probably already know what to do. You know that, that it's just the inside part, three X plus one. On the right, you have to remember that you're expanding a binomial here. So it's square root of x plus one plus two times the square root of x plus one plus two. And you have to use FOIL here. So we'll go slow. Um, the first term times the first term is square root of x plus one, but it's, it's, it's squared because it's together. So it's x plus one. So just x plus one, yeah. The outer is square root of x plus one times two. So that's plus two square root of x plus one. The inner is two times the square root of x plus one. Those combine to get four square root of x plus one. And then the last two times two is four plus four here. So you have this line three x plus one equals all this stuff on the right. The, um, you want to again, isolate the square root. So to do this, you're gonna move um, from the right, the right side to the left side. So you're gonna subtract X, that gives you two X. One and four make five. When you subtract five over here, you get minus four equals four square root X plus one. So optionally, it's it's totally optional. Optionally, you can uh, you can divide by the number in front yeah. of the square root. It doesn't matter. Some like if if it was a two, I would tell you to divide it because both of these are divisible by two. Mm -hmm. It's four, so you get a fraction. Um, it, I I would wait. I wouldn't I wouldn't do it here. So we're gonna square both sides. I hope I did that right. Um, okay, so on the left, it's FOIL again. It's two X minus four times two X minus four, four X squared. Um, minus 16 X plus 16 equals. So on the right side here, you have to square both the four and the square root of X plus one squared. So you end up getting this 16 times x plus one. Let me know if that's not clear because I can give more information on that. Um, why do you do it separately instead of just um, like doing it foil again? So there's no, there's no operator in here, like a plus or a minus, oh. which is, which is oh, the yeah. reason you foil over here. Um, as a side note, let's take a number like six squared. Six is really two times three squared. Mm -hmm. So two squared times three squared is four times nine, which is 36, which is exactly what you expected to get. But um, you do have to look for that operator. There, there's there's no, uh, no plus or minus operator there. Okay. So if you distribute this 16, you get 16x plus 16, 4x squared minus 16x plus 16. Um, you're gonna move, move terms left. So when you subtract 16x, you get 32x. When you subtract 16, it goes away completely. So now you're gonna solve by factoring and GCF. So the GCF here is 4x. 
So if you distribute the 4x inside here, you'll get 4x squared minus 32x. You set both of those equal to 0. So you get x equals 0. And then you get x equals 8. OK. We have to check these. Yeah. So we're going to check each of them uh, separately. Um, I'm going to write a little line here that says check x equals 0. Square root of 3 times 0 plus 1 minus square root of 0 plus 1. Does that equal 2? So this becomes the square root of 1 minus the square root of 1. And you can see right away 1 minus 1 is 0. That, that does not equal 2. So this one is extraneous. Now we're going to check x equals 8. Square root 3 times 8 plus 1 minus square root 8 plus 1. Does that equal 2? This is the square root of 25 minus the square root of 9. 5 minus 3 equals 2. 2 equals 2. We're good. Yes, this works. Um, I need to just pause for like 60 seconds. I will okay. be right back. Hello, I'm back. Hi. Hi. Uh, sorry for the delay there. So, uh, moving on now to the next page, number thirty-six. Is that is that uh, where we're going to move to? Yeah, it's page four hundred two. Okay. All right. So I got to snip in. Um, so there's there's they're giving you a couple of functions, and then they want you to find some stuff associated with it. Okay, so the question asks you to find G, G, and I call it bubble, G bubble F of negative two, and the bubble refers to composition. What does that mean? 
Uh, the bubble or the composition? <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, um, there, there's there's um, a couple of different operators. There's there's multiplication, right? Um, there's division. There's subtraction, and there's addition. So you can take two functions, and and you can do f times g, f divided by g, f minus g, f plus g. Okay. Okay. Bubble is not any of these. It's something totally different. But usually you start with with these ones on the left. So the the bubble g bubble f of a number. I'm just going to put a number there for right now. It, it means g of f of that number. And this still probably isn't very clear. But what it means is you first find f of that number. Or in other words, put the number into f. Oh, OK. Second, take the output, the output of that number or of that, take the output of that, not the number, and put into G. Okay. So an example will, will clearly help. So G bubble F of negative two means G of F of negative two. So I want you to first find, figure out, or tell me what is F of negative two. Oh, okay, this makes sense. Um, it's four. And then I just do four minus three. Yeah, that's what I got. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, it, I, I uh, apologize. So um, what your final answer is correct. The, what I was trying to say is, is that your instructor will give you two functions, like the 2x squared plus x minus 3 and the x minus 1, like you have at the top of your uh, page there. And then you'll be asked to add them, subtract them, multiply, divide them, and then do a composition. And, and we're kind of skipping past all of that. So I guess you've either done it or the instructor didn't feel like it was necessary to show you, but it's very common on exams to see that. Okay. Now, let's go to 42. Um, 42 is doing it with respect to a letter, which at first can seem impossible, uh, but we'll, we'll just step through it the way we did the last problem. F bubble G means to do F of G of A. So the first thing you have to do is figure out what is G of A, and that means to put A wherever there is an X. So in the in the in problem 42, uh, G of X, I'll just write up up here, um, G of X equals X minus three, G of A equals A minus three. You're just putting that A wherever there's an X. Okay. Second part is to take the output, use the output, which in this case is a minus three, and you're going to put in f of x, which is x squared. You're going to you're going to take this a minus three and you're putting it in for x. So it's f of a minus three equals a minus three squared, 
f of a minus three equals a minus three times a minus three, which is a squared minus six a plus nine. Okay. And then you just leave it at that? That's it, yeah. Okay. There's, whereas I feel like we, well, it looks like what your instructor did is gave you like an example of each type that you might see. Most of the time you'd get multiple, multiple homework assignment or multiple problems in each case and you didn't get that, so. Um, yeah, his homework assignments are super short, so. Yeah, be, be careful here that, that if you didn't understand something, you know, to either go do a few more or, you know, redo the ones we did for sure. Okay. All right, so now you uh, you have a factor count. Yeah, just like a problem of the week thing. Problem of the week, okay. Um, let me, let me snip this in. Um, oh wait, there's a problem below. Can you write a rule to factor a number based on its prime? Use it to answer the problem. Okay, what is the least positive integer with exactly 24 different positive factors? Okay. Uh, all right, so I got it snipped in here. 12 is the least positive integer with six different positive factors. What is the least positive integer with exactly 24 positive factors? Okay, so let's look at 12. 12, I think what the instructor is saying is, is that one, two, three, four, six, and 12 are the six factors. Do you okay. agree with that? Yeah. Okay, and we're trying to find something with exactly 24 positive factors. Um, the reason he says it that way is because like, um, there's also the negatives of these, which probably isn't relevant here, but mm -hmm. to help write the prime factorization of 12. 12 is, so this is the two times six, two times three, 12 is two squared times three to the power of one. Is there a connection between the exponents and the number of factors? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I had not really thought about this. So these these methods are used in um, cryptography, um, counting, making keys for when you do uh, electronic transactions, um, like if you use your debit card at a bank or you go out somewhere, a credit card online or whatever. Um, there's there's a they factor large numbers is one of the algorithms they use. Um, that's just an aside. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> but I have no have idea what, yeah, what we're doing here. So go ahead. Yeah, why I have to do this. But, you know. um, so why? OK, so I think the relationship is, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Something with the factor or like the I don't know. He said to use like the numbers below 15, 27, 30 as help. I'm not really sure. So 15, 15, 15 has uh, factors of 1, 3, 5, and 15. And then its factorization is 3 to the 1, 5 to the 1. Um, uh, so it's, uh, yeah, I, okay. I mean, one is always a factor, right? Yeah. Um, the number by itself is always a factor. So like, like in, in 12, the, the base here of two is always a factor. Three is always a factor. The number two, its power is a factor. Two, that's four. Multiplying them together gets you a factor, and then the other number is a factor. So, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, that's in words. 
that's where maybe it's good to go back and review this video in words. It's kind of like, if we look at 30, uh, we already know that one and 30 are factors to start with. We know that because it factors is two, three, five, we know that it's two, three, and five because of that. Then we know if, if the exponent was more than one to like use it, which we don't have that, then you multiply like two times three is six, uh, two times five is 10, three times five is 15. And I think that gets you to eight factors there. Yeah, so you just like take the last two numbers and then everything in between, it's like you can multiply it to get the other ones? Yes, yes. Okay. So what is the, what is the least positive integer with exactly 24 different positive factors? Um, so it's gonna be pretty big. I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, I, um, and it's, it's, it's probably a multiple of two. Um, like let's take 120 and let's do a prime factorization of it. I don't, I don't know that this is right, but this is one of those that works pretty well. So it's two and 60, two and 30, uh, two and 15, three and five. Okay, so this is two to the power of three times three times five. So we know that it's one and 120. And then we've got two, three, five. And then you also have to go two to the power of two. So that gives you a four. Two to the power of three, that gives you an eight. Then you have to multiply each of these. So like two times three gives you six. Two times five gives you 10. Then you gotta go two to the power of two. So that's four times three, that gives you 12. Four times five gives you 20. Then you go eight times three, that gives you 24. Eight times five gives you 40. And then uh, three times five gives you 15. One, two, okay. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So this has fourteen. So we're way short. Mm -hmm. Fourteen um, factors, positive factors. Okay. Um, um, so the the um, the other thing here that's going on is is it's 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 like a counting problem um, in probability. So what I mean is is um, and actually uh, we're missing some here. Like sixty is not in here. Oh, because you have to multiply four times fifteen. That's sixty. Eight times fifteen. Huh. Okay. I'm still see. I'm still not seeing the rule, um, but yeah. Um, like, let's just take some of the, the. So we have two. Well, it's this number times this, but also times the product of that. So there's another way to do this. Um, let me try to think of here the best best approach here. Um, We've done a lot of these in Excel. Is that, I think, is that right? Yeah, we usually use a program. Okay. Um, so I'm looking for something, um, something that finds the factors of a number and might be able to do this. So 
Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm not, I'm not finding anything obvious to do here other than uh, to keep, keep doing this. Um, yeah. So, like, there are websites that will find the factors of a number calculator, and. You kind of, if you kind of know what numbers work, um, you can, you can, um, you can find this. I, I think the answer is 480. Um, okay. It, it does have four fact. It does have 24 factors, which is what it's looking for. I just have to make sure it's the smallest number. 24 right and and that's that's the challenge um the, 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 so, so so i know this that that like 30 60 120 240 these numbers like they're, they're used all the time mm -hmm. for factoring so that's that's that was my way of coming up with with this is there another way um yeah um it, it's probably worth still trying to figure out what he means by the rule for the number of factors of a number based on its prime factorization. Yeah, like what's similar with all of them? What, what, what does he, yeah, what does he mean by, um, like, like, why does three to the third? Why does twenty-seven have four factors based on this three to the third? So it's it's got this three, three squared. <laughs> um, Number of factors based on its prime factorization. Two times two forty, two times one twenty, two times sixty. Two times thirty. Two times fifteen. Three times five. So this is two to the power of one, two, three, four, five. Two to the fifth times three times five. Yeah. One, so the exponents of seven. It, it feels like there's a rule. The rule is like there's something like the number of numbers you have plus the sum of the exponents, but that doesn't work here. Number plus exponent, number of numbers plus exponents. <laughs> uh, man. So I'm struggling here. I don't see a connection between the exponents and the number of factors. Um, yeah. So one of the reasons you could justify this being the smallest is is anything that would increase with a power of two or five um, gets larger than than this. Um, like I'm trying to think here. Like if it was if it was two to the fourth times three squared times five, that number is larger than the number we just came up with. So, it, it, it the connection is probably having to do with this right here. Each of these, the problem is we have to take each of these numbers two to the one, two to the two, and multiply not just by three, not just by five, but three times five. Mm -hmm. So there's. If there's buckets here, there's there's five numbers that go here, 
and there's three numbers that go here. But maybe there's really six. Two times that, two times that, two times that together. Yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I'm not, I'm struggling to find more words to help you here. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, if it were me, I would say, I would ask the instructor to, to try to explain how these mean four factors, like what is it about this pattern here? Like one has power of one, power of one, but two numbers, this one has power of three, but one number, this has powers of one, but it has three numbers, so why is that eight? Yeah, um, I can talk to him in class about that. And then I think, and I think you'll find the answer. Um, okay. It, or at least be able to explain why 480 is the, the correct answer. Mm -hmm. Is there something else we can work on for the last few minutes? Um, let me check. Um, not really. I can go back into the first chapters. Um, maybe we could do some more with the um, ones that have like an exponent of a fraction. Okay, uh, that would be, that'd be fine. So let me pull one up here to do. Um, So we did 22, so let me do 18. So 18 says to solve x plus five to the two thirds power equals four. Okay, so this is the cube root of x plus five squared now. So notice how the, the, the you, you've already isolated the power, the exponent here. Yeah. So to undo the cube, the cube root, you're going to cube both sides. So the, the cubing of both sides, cube root x plus five squared cubed equals four cubed that undoes the, the cube root. So you just have this X plus five squared equals 64. So you undo a square with a square root. I'm writing it out to try to, to make it very clear what, what is, what is the, the step here? Because it's, it's often, it's often mixed. Um, when you're taking a square root though, very importantly, it's plus or minus. Okay. So this becomes X plus five equals plus or minus eight. And you're solving two problems. You're solving X plus five equals eight, X plus five equals negative eight. So you have X equals three, X equals negative 13. So this is, I chose this problem because it illustrates the issue with just trying to solve it without writing it in, in um, radical notation. So if we go back and we write 18 X plus five to the two thirds power equals four. So instead of four, I'm gonna write two squared. So to undo, to undo the two thirds power, you're gonna raise it to the three halves power, which seems totally reasonable. Because mm -hmm. two thirds times three halves gives you one and two to the two to the three halves power gives you two cubed because two times three halves is, two, is three. So you get X plus five equals eight, X equals three. And notice how it's one, but not both. Yeah. Now it only happens when you have an odd bottom and an even top. Okay. But that's kind of a lot to 
remember that it's that one case where you have to deal with this. It's better to always write it in in this um, yeah. exponent form. So 19 is just like that if you wanted to practice that okay. on your own. Um, 20 is not like that because the um, the exponent on the bottom of the fraction is even, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it's, it's it's always better to write it into a radical form. Okay. All right. So this will uh, this will end the lesson for today. I'm going to send you these notes and the video um, in the next I don't know, probably 20 minutes because it's not taking very long. I wanted to just ask you if you don't mind. Um, you had no problem scheduling a new lesson. I actually. I uh, rebranded my uh, tutoring business and did you have any trouble finding it? Like, was it clear where to go to schedule a lesson? My mom and I were doing it together. Like, okay. It looks like the website. And I was like, go to, it's, it's tutoring by Matthew now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've had a few people um, um, not be able to find it. So I'm glad you're able to. Thanks so much for scheduling. I look forward to helping you again. Of course. Thank you. See okay. you soon. Bye. Okay.